Okay, question six. Wilson's disease is a rare genetic disorder which results in a buildup of copper ions in the board in the body. Unmetabolized copper, copper ions are toxic, leading to health complications. Copper ions can be removed by reaction with trientine. Okay, and we have that diagram here. Okay, trientine is a tetradentate ligand which reacts with copper two ions in a one to one ratio to form a complex ion, which can then be removed from the body. So this is forming effectively a chelate. This is this is kind of clamping around so you can remove it. Ligands form dative covalent bonds with metal ions. State what's meant by a dative covalent bond. So this is straight definition. Um, so what you have to say here is that both electrons in the pair come from one of them in the pair. Um, so I'll go with one species in the pair. Okay, draw a structural formula for the complex ion. Right, I'm telling you right now, I sketched this out because what I do is I work the answer and then I check that I'm totally with the mark scheme and then I come back to it. And I started drawing this and I ended up with some very strange shapes. And then I looked at the mark scheme and I was incredibly relieved that I don't actually have to get the angles correct. What you have to have, which was certainly what I doodled but was a bit dodgy. Okay, so you need to have the copper ion in the centre. You don't actually have to put the charge on there, but if you do, you obviously have to say that it's 2 plus, but I didn't bother. Okay, and then you need to have this ligand wrapped around it so it connects at four points. And what's important is that the four points are going to be to the nitrogens because that's where you're going to get your lone pair um, available to make the bonding. Okay, so you have to get the structure right as well. So mine looks pretty dodgy, but would get the mark. So I had my NH2 and then trying to get my angles going. So I had my next NH2, well NH, sorry. And then my next angles, NH, it's really difficult to draw this. And then my next NH2. It is not the neatest, but what's important is I could then, I'll do it in a different color so it's a bit clearer here. I could then draw my bonding to the copper and all to the all to the nitrogen, and my structure is correct to this formula. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm expecting some weird and wonderful ones, but it has to follow that. Okay. Right, zinc ethanoate can be used to treat Wilson's disease. Zinc ethanoate can be prepared from zinc hydroxide and ethanoic acid. Name this type of reaction. Well, that's just an acid and alkali, so that is just neutralization. Okay, zinc ethanoate is a salt of a weak acid. State what's meant by a weak acid. So weak acids only partially dissociate to ions in solution. Straight definition. Okay. Right, a student carried out an experiment to determine the value of Y in a hydrated zinc ethanoate, and you've got the whole formula for that one. Five gram ma sample mass was heated until all the water was removed and a constant mass of 4.18 grams was obtained. Name the piece of apparatus that should be used to store the zinc ethanoate while cooling. Okay, that is a desiccator. Okay, the value of Y. So to calculate the value of Y, so a little bit of work for this one. It's a two marker, it's not excessive, but it's okay. Right, so we're starting with the mass of water. So mass of water is your 5 minus your 4.18. So that gives you 0 0.8 grams, okay? I can then convert that to moles. Moles is mass divided by formula mass. Okay, so that gives us 0 0.04555555. So, um, because I would keep it all in the calculator probably when I'm working with it. Okay, we've got our mass of our zinc carbonate. Sorry, zinc ethanoate. Um, and that is 4.18, so that's fine. So moles of that. So moles is mass divided by formula mass. Formula mass of this. So we were going however you do it. So the zinc, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You've got uh, four of those, six of those, four of those, and one of those. Uh, the only one that's at all difficult to go and get is the zinc, that data book and calculate all that up and I've t where have I got that? 183.4. Okay, um, so 183.4 gives us our moles at 0 0.0228. Right, I'm looking for a ratio. 
So ratio is going to be 0 0.0228 my zinc ethanoate to my water. And so that is a 1 to 2. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's got to be a whole number, so it's 2. Okay, last bit in this one. Student repeated the experiment with a second sample of hydrated zinc ethanoate. Student calculations were correct, but the value of Y was found to be different. Suggest a reason. Okay, so we could assume that they're not good at the experiment, so that could mean that they didn't fully dry it. Um, you know, they didn't take it to constant mass, basically. Um, you could say that they didn't cool in the desiccator, because um, that would mean that you'd get rehydration happening as it cooled down, so that wouldn't work. Um, assuming that they were actually spot on with their experimental work, then there's other things that could have happened, so it might not be a pure sample. Okay, we could have, it might just be a different, a different um, hydration level. Like a different sample that gave you a different hydration that might actually be totally correct, just not what they expected. Um, and yeah, any reasonable answer for that one was getting the mark. There was lots of options. Okay, and that's the question.